How's it going everyone? UML here. Can you believe that next month it will be the three year anniversary of Super Mario Odyssey's release date? Man, where'd the time go? I remember back when the Super Mario Odyssey Switch presentation trailer came out back in January of 2017. This game pretty much blew up on the internet. Everyone was so excited about a new 3D Mario game. What more could a Nintendo fan ask for? Nintendo brought back the 3D sandbox open world experience that hadn't been seen in years. The hype for this game was such an awesome experience. Everyone was super excited to play this game. Not only that, but the release of Jump Up Superstar was just glorious and the Living Tombstone remix did nothing but fan the flames for the hype. In October of 2017, Super Mario Odyssey was released for the Nintendo Switch with universal acclaim. The game wasn't perfect, but lots of people were talking about Mario Odyssey being the best Mario game of all time. It's been almost three years since Odyssey made its launch on the Switch, and I wanted to see just how well this game holds up to the praise the internet could not let go of not long ago. So does Super Mario Odyssey hold up to all the universal praise that the game got in 2017, three years later? Well, let's dive in and find out, shall we? Just to make this clear, I am just looking at the gameplay, not the plot. The plot is still pretty basic for a Mario plot, and honestly it doesn't affect my thoughts on playing this game. I will say though, Bowser planning to marry Peach was very surprising at the time. Now, it's, it's a Mario plot with a surprising catch. So on to the gameplay. Playing this game for this video, the controls were somewhat difficult to get used to at first. Maybe it's because it's been a little while since I've even used my Switch? But getting back into Odyssey felt different than playing Mario Galaxy or Mario 64 after some time. With that being said, after 5 minutes or so, things felt much more natural, and Mario's still a lot of fun to control. Mario has his standard abilities from Mario 64 and Sunshine with a couple of new abilities. One of his new abilities is rolling around in a ball, kind of similar to that belly flop move in Sunshine. It's a lot of fun to use and is great for traveling far distances faster. Much of Mario's new abilities comes in the form of Cappy. It's actually a pretty good contrast between the casual and pro experience. Cappy can be utilized in ways that I probably don't even know about to give you an advantage. For example, in the Lost Kingdom, you need to throw your cap at this enemy to break the blocks. But with Cappy, you can just jump around the blocks and save a few seconds. It's impressive how much this cap can influence your preferred gameplay. But Cappy is more than just a gameplay gimmick. Cappy is responsible for all of Mario's power-ups. That's right, Mario doesn't have any traditional power-ups in this game. His power-ups come from the multiple enemies that you run across in your adventure. Enemies such as Goombas, Bullet Bills, and Fire Bros can be used to your advantage by throwing your hat at them. I find these abilities to be really fun, though some of them are less enjoyable to use. Cappy is an awesome addition to this game without a doubt. He can give you an extra jump, collect coins and music notes, and turn you into many different enemies throughout the game. Now on to the kingdoms themselves. All of the main kingdoms in this game look amazing. Aesthetically, this game looks fantastic in general, but the kingdoms are all a lot of fun to explore. The Metro Kingdom is my favorite, but I also really like the Luncheon, Sand, and the Mushroom Kingdom as well. Aside from the dark and darker side of the moon, these kingdoms generally are pretty easy to complete. Some kingdoms like the Snow and Wooded Kingdom feel empty at points, but for the most part, these kingdoms have a lot of entertainment throughout them. The only real complaint I have about the kingdoms is that a couple of them are underutilized. A couple of kingdoms such as the Rune Kingdom and Cloud Kingdom only have one boss fight and a pretty low amount of moons to collect. I feel like these kingdoms could have more to offer. But regardless, most kingdoms in this game are very fun to explore, and most of these kingdoms have moons scattered throughout them. Speaking of moons, for the one person who is watching this who doesn't know what moons are, they are this game's power stars. If you need proof, the Mushroom Kingdom literally brands them as power stars. There are up to 999 of these things in this game which can be found in kingdoms, rewarded after boss fights, or bought from the shop. This offers a lot of replay value to this game, as you only need 124 to beat the game. I continued off of my last playthrough, and I had about 520 or so when I started, and I'm happy to say that collecting new power moons is still very satisfying. Even more power moons can be collected when you break a moon rock that appears after you beat Bowser and collect all the other moons. When you collect a power moon, you aren't brought back to the hub world or the beginning of the kingdom, so you can collect lots of power moons in a short period of time if you are within reach of enough of them. I guess we'll finish off this video by going over the extra stuff. The shop offers two sections, a normal shop and a kingdom exclusive one. The exclusive shop contains items that can only be purchased with the kingdom's variant of purple coins, which can be found throughout the kingdoms. Most exclusive shop items relate to the kingdom, such as souvenirs and costumes. Speaking of costumes, there are lots of clothing options for Mario to wear. Some are original, while others are callbacks to other games and media. 
Each costume has a hat and body attire, but that doesn't mean you have to wear them together. You can mix and match different styles to however you please. Like, how the heck did decades of progression lead to this attire? Nevertheless, the costumes are loads of fun to wear. There's a good amount of minigames to play as well. My favorite is the RC car race in the Metro Kingdom. I have played this game countless times, and not to flex or anything, but I currently tie for 238 on the records board. This RC car race is extremely addicting, and I'm still trying to beat my high score. Another notable minigame is the Mario Face remake game. You are simply recreating Mario's face from memory. It's not too hard, but it's usually pretty funny how screwed up his face can look. And that's not even mentioning Balloon World. Luigi makes his appearance in this game as the host of Balloon World, a game where you hide a balloon in the kingdom and wait for a person to find it. Or you can do the finding and earn coins for each balloon you find. It's a pretty simple game, but like the RC car race, it's very addicting and can give you a pretty good reward for doing it. As a side note, I really like how coins are used in this game. They no longer refill your health, which is what hearts are for, but they can be used to purchase items at the shop. It actually gives you a reason to collect as many coins as you can. And that's amazing. So even though all the hype for Super Mario Odyssey is gone, it's very easy to see why this was a very revolutionary title for Nintendo. I mean, it even brought back the open world sandbox gameplay style that made Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, and to an extent Super Mario Galaxy so popular. Even then, Super Mario Odyssey still does a good job of appealing to both casual and pro gamers alike. So would I say that Super Mario Odyssey holds up very well even after three years and the hype has all died down? Absolutely. I would even say that it's still my favorite Mario game of all time. So even in 2020, if you haven't played Super Mario Odyssey yet, definitely go out and buy it. So with that being said, hopefully you enjoy this video. Feel free to like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And I will see you in the next video.